1997, Colin McRae as Subaru Impreza. A new co-driver in Nicky Grist, a new set of regulations in WRC, a new era of cars. This was a faster Impreza with new turbos. This was a sleeker Subaru with just two doors and big arches penned by Peter Stevens. But this was also still a driver's car with a manual gearbox and tightly wound diffs. This is very, very special. This is a dream come true. This car has been restored and immaculately prepared by Ian Gwynn at BGM Sport, but it is owned by the impeccably stylish Max Girardo of Girardo & Co. Max, thank you so much for letting me drive this wonderful, wonderful car. In general terms, it is a Subaru Impreza S3 WRC 97. You are yeah, spot on. You've done but you're your going to tell me what it is in specific <laughs> terms, what this actual car well, is. Well, this actual car is a car that McRae drove uh, in the 97 season. So 97 is when WRC came in. So actually the first car that McRae won a WRC event in and it uh, won Safari. So historically a really important rally car. That season, Subaru won the first three rallies, I think, didn't they? Very good, they won the first three, and they won the Constructors' uh, uh, Championships. Last so they time were, they did that. Exactly, exactly right. They won exactly. driver's titles, but not the... Do you know yourself when it comes to oh, cars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bubble hat. <laughs> <laughs> McRae should have won his second driver's championship in 1997. He won five rallies, but also had six retirements. And he lost to Tommy Mackinnon by just one point. Somehow very McRae. Obviously, after Safari, it did other rallies. Yeah, in after the... Safari, then uh, uh, it did three rallies. So Safari, uh, Argentina, which is the uh, livery that you see here, uh, and uh, uh, Indonesia, where in typical uh, McRae fashion, he had a bit of an off and, uh, <laughs> and tore off a wheel. But in, in Argentina, so Safari win, Argentina second, and then his uh, moment. And then after that, got sold to Italy, where he did a huge amount of, uh, of events uh, in the Italian Rally Championship and European Rally Championship. So it changed it back to tarmac spec yeah. and off it went into the San Remo stages and Rally della Lana and all the Italian uh, Italian events. So what state was it when you when you got hold of it? It was pretty similar to this. So actually we got it out of Italy uh, and it was in tarmac spec and quite similar to what you see uh, what you see now. You know, today these cars have been are no longer just old rally cars and people are starting to appreciate them for the history they had and people are starting to put them back to how they should be and how McRae uh, uh, drove it. It's a two-door. Um, which is pretty special. <laughs> which is pretty cool, isn't it? It just, it just <laughs> looks so good. We still got, we've still got 555 livery as well. Not that we obviously condone <laughs> smoking not. cigarettes and all that, but mechanically, what else are we sort of talking about? So about mechanically, I think it's, it's sort of the pinnacle of an era. It's still a manual car. There is lots of electronic diffs. I mean, you've been you've been driving it. Uh, it's still three pedals. It's still a steering wheel, and it's still the differentials that mechanically work. Yeah, you can you know set them at the beginning of a stage and slightly tighter or slightly looser. But then once it's set, you are the one that has to turn in. You are the one that has to make the car move. It's not like a modern car that's got lots of electronics. You're connected to the car, and and it, and it's the last of these cars. And they started getting more complicated, and they they they're quicker. Yes. But the driving experience becomes different. I love the feeling of, of gravel tyres on tarmac as well. It's, it's, it's really cool. And the other thing, of course, it has a number of them. P8 exactly WRC. Right. Yeah, exactly right. And do you ever drive it on the road? No, I, I, to be honest, you know, not very, very often. But you can. That's yeah. the great thing. So we're finished today. We could easily just, both of us jump in. It's got two seats. Both of us jump in, go to the pub, um, park outside, have a beer, and then we could drive home, which... which it is really a it's racing. So cool. It's a racing car for the road. How many? How many other cars? You know, we're saying how many other cars that you can actually drive on the road. People spend loads of money to 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 make racing cars a road legal to try and you know whether it's a Porsche GT1 and F40 LMs. But this is actually a racing car for the road. Relatively easy. You can actually jump in it at home, start it up by yourself on a maybe not early on a Sunday morning, but on a Sunday Sunday afternoon, and go for a blast yeah. and come back. That's how good. This is not really once you've done it. A couple of times, it's not complicated. Not complicated it? at all. So you've got three pedals, you've got a normal H pattern, H pattern gearbox, yeah. and, and off you go. So, off I went. Cobra Sprint Course in Colin McRae's 1997 S3 WRC Impreza. 
How cool is that? The spec sheet for the car says 310 brake horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 367 pounds foot of torque at 4,000 RPM. The weight is 1,230 kilos, the minimum allowed by the regs. You've obviously got 3 pedals, dog box, I am using the clutch. But when you really know what you're doing, you don't need to, so you can left foot brake a bit more, which then helps you get into the corners. You have to throw gears at it constantly, and it is absolutely brilliant. This isn't like later active diff WRC cars that turn in with almost no effort, whatever the corner. It can be flicked through the quick stuff, sure, but in the tighter bends you really need to get the weight moving around on the way into the corner, encouraging, even cajoling the rear end, using brakes and steering to set it free, so that you can get back on the power nice and early, use that spool rear diff and start throwing the lever at the box again. The things you notice when you get in, it feels sort of initially not hugely responsive through the steering, but then as soon as you turn in, it's so agile. Once you're into the flow, it is magical. On the gravel tyres, it feels like you're constantly floating and flowing. The car tough and resolutely mechanical, yet also precise and delicately poised. That soundtrack, it just raises goosebumps on your arms. If I had one last tank of fuel, this might just be the car I would choose. Flat out, no doubt. Thank you very much to Girardo & Co for letting me drive this car. It was, as I said, a dream come true. And if you haven't seen it already, why not check out their video of them transporting a Christmas tree. No really, it's transporting a Christmas tree. Go and have a look.